Today, I gave blood. A lot of blood. I would feel weak, but the power will not let me. I have regeneration, and however many times I wound, I heal. Thanks to the heart of the wither, I managed to get done in a few days what has been on my mind for months. I progress through blood magic, as easy as a newborn wolf takes to his mother's milk. It feels all too natural. Easy. But that is the power of blood magic. Easy to master if you are willing to forgo any pleasant sparkles. Easy if you are willing to sacrifice life. I will sacrifice, but never the innocent. Now then, welcome back to another episode of A Druid's Tale. Today's episode starts early in the Let's Play. A let's Play with Blood Magic. And goes... Well, I'm going to be skipping ahead quite a bit because I've got things like this happening, right? Uh, just a refresher for those of you that don't know much about Blood Magic. Okay, you make a blood altar. A blood altar is fairly simple to create. A few stone, a furnace, a diamond and a couple of ingots makes a blood altar. That blood altar then requires blood. The way to put blood in it is to sacrifice yourself using a sacrificial orb. And this is glass with a piece of gold and a piece of iron. And that would basically cut you, doing some damage to you and put the blood into the altar. From there, you can make yourself one of these, a weak blood orb. A weak blood orb is a diamond in the tier one altar. That is called a tier one altar, when you've got it to that state. And you put 2,000 life points in there, LP, and you can turn it into a weak blood orb. That's all the first stages. You do that to create your weak blood orb. And then you can make these blank slates. A blank slate is a piece of stone in the blood altar with just a thousand life points, makes a blank slate. From there you can make these kind of blood runes. There's a whole host of different types of blood runes, but you need to get through this one first just to get to the tier two. So blank slates and stone, plus your blood orb that you put in there, your weak blood orb, make some of these blood runes. You surround your blood altar in blood runes. Now here I've got the more advanced self-sacrifice runes, but still. The runes need to go around, so you've got eight basic runes around to make a tier two. Once you've got a tier two, you should have a capacity of 10,000 LP. You can put uh, no, 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 this guy. Uh, an emerald in a tier two with 5,000 LP to make an apprentice blood orb. Once you've got the Apprentice Blood Orb, you can make the Self-Sacrifice Runes. Similar to the Rune of Sacrifice, the Self-Sacrifice uh, goes in like so. So the Self-Sacrifice is Reinforced Slate, some Stone and Glowstone, whereas the Rune of Sacrifice is Stone, Runic Slate and Gold. The difference is, this is when you sacrifice something to the altar, and this is when you sacrifice yourself to the altar. So at the start, it's probably best to replace those basic runes with self-sacrifice runes so you get a little bit more bonus when you're putting blood into the altar here. That is where we set off. That is where we've been for a long time in a druid's tale until we destroyed the wither boss. And now I'm working on beacons and things and I can fly and all sorts of cool stuff happens. So, with the ability to fly, I was able to kill another two Wither Bosses, get another two Nether Stars. And now these Nether Stars have been turned into Beacons, and they have given us Haste, Regeneration, and Resistance over here. I think I should have Speed as well, but I can't remember what I put on that one. Uh, but one of these, I think it's this near side one, is a full Beacon. I used a ton of iron and made a full Beacon so that I could have the Regeneration effect. Because not only does this get annoying going... Kill me, kill me softly, kill me softly, kill me softly. But eventually you get down to no hearts and have to regen. Natural regeneration is okay, but regeneration from a beacon is much faster, as you can see. And I've got lots and lots and lots of blood to put in this altar right now. I'm working up to a tier 4 altar. A tier 3 altar goes on to these next bits. And that requires me to fill out 
in between these with more runes just below. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this recipe for the rune of sacrifice and putting those down below. But each time I have to do a rune of sacrifice, I have to get a reinforced slate. A reinforced slate is simply a blank slate put back through. So you put stone through it once and out comes the slate. Then you put the slate in it again and it becomes reinforced slate. And that's what I need to do over and over and over again because it takes two per rune of sacrifice. The rune of sacrifice is going to be very important because then I can start sacrificing mobs instead of sacrificing myself. So very useful indeed. There's two there so I can now throw that into there. There we go and make a, another rune of sacrifice. And then I'm bringing them down here and changing out where I've put stone bricks which in this case this tier of altar is just down here so I'm going to take in these out and replacing them with these runes I can fly so why am I jumping so bad there we go so I've got a fair few more to do so I'm going to grind that out first before I can do much more else alrighty so our previous uh, setup we had a miscraft portal bringing mobs here and a little uh, ring of these paving stones of warding and use those to keep them in place while I killed them with a sacrificial dagger. Well, over here I'm going to do much the same thing. We're up to, I think it's tier 3 now, and I'm just building up to tier 4, but we've put a lot more in. There we go, yeah, tier 3 now. Tier 3 with some self-sacrifice and some sp speed runes going around the outside here with the glowstone on top. That's all working, as you can see, all in working order. Uh, but now I want to do... Uh, let's see. Can I can I use one of these with a shift click on the top? Yes, I can. Okay. Now I want to do something else slightly... I don't know. Slightly weird, maybe? It seems like it might be a weird idea, but I'm not sure how weird exactly it's going to be. Right, so, down here, we have another location that I've set up with a miscraft book so that their mobs spawn here from over there. And this should prevent them from even attempting to jump up because they can't jump out, they can't go anywhere. So I should be able to just sit here with the dagger of sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. And those, uh, because I'm using these angry zombies from Mine Fact, not Mine Factory Reloaded, from Thorncraft, because I'm using angry zombies, they will burn up in the sunshine. So I just one hit them to get rid of them, one hit them to get rid of them. But if I move away, or I decide, well, that's enough, I don't need to do anything else, I can go over and start doing some more crafting or whatever. I'd just go and do something else, go to sleep or do whatever. They will just burn up and die. Unless I come back to them and carry on slaughtering them. So it doesn't matter how long I leave them there. They're just going to die from sunlight exposure if I'm not killing them. And this should keep spawning them regardless. Now, I'm trying to avoid the idea that I'm going to leave it on forever and ever and ever. So I want to just put it in there for now and test it out. And uh, is it working? I should hear it. Can I hear it? Can I get a... <laughs> can I get a teleport? Yeah, there we go. Go on. There we go. Yes. Okay. The little ting that you can hear is that I set these ones to disarm. So if the, if the zombies actually have armor or weapons or anything, it disarms them over there before they come in over here. Oh, man, that's going to be loud, isn't it? That's going to be really loud. Let me just uh, turn that down. So I can just keep feeding the blood altar all day long. Just so long as they're coming through, that is. And I also get all the XP and all the drops from it. And if I've got a wand in my inventory, I could also be uh, leveling or recharging my wand as well. It's kind of a nice little thing. Now, I don't want to be standing here killing monsters all day, every day. But it serves a purpose for right now. For right now, it is serving a purpose in it that it, I'm not self-sacrificing. Uh, it's still using a lot of that blood up. Uh, but it is making these reinforced slates quickly enough for me to 
move on to the next stage, which is exactly where this video is going now. On to the next stage. Okay, well, I think I've got this right. It's been a long time since I did this. Uh, currently starting off with a full tier 3 altar with 10,000 LP in the network. Um, you can actually add more LP to your personal network as well, but I haven't been dealing with that yet. I'm still just building up to the next tier. And I've got runes down there between these points at the right place downstairs. Now all set up waiting for blood stones to go here. Where each of these red uh, wool are is supposed to be a nice shiny red bloodstone. And I really like the bloodstones, but they're quite costly, especially in the first place. The only way to get hold of blood shards to make bloodstones is by killing hostile mobs with a bla bound blade. And there's quite a lot of things that require to make a bound blade. Mostly, it starts off with a diamond sword. You're going to need a diamond sword and an activation crystal on a ritual of binding to make a bound sword. So, ritual of binding. Lava crystal turns into an activation crystal if I put it through the uh, altar. And that will give me all the things I need to do it. But the ritual of binding, which is the next thing I want to uh, it requires 24 ritual stones and a master ritual stone. The master ritual stone requires a magician's orb. And then I put these tools in. These tools are made up from various vanilla recipes through the blood altar. To make a ritual diviner to be able to show me where all the things are and place all the blocks for me. Colouring them all in and everything like that. I take a block of gold, put it in there, it's going to take 20,000 LP. So i got to keep killing these guys for 25,000 LP for that to turn into a magician's orb. And uh, yeah, they occasionally get me, but i got regen on and resistance and they ain't going to do nothing much there. Uh, and this should keep it filled up fairly swiftly anyway. Let's see. Uh, nope, it's not filling it up fast enough. It's not keeping it filled fast enough anyway. And we get there eventually. Looks like it. Yeah, Magician's Blood Orb. Awesome. Okay, so how much uh, how much have we got left? I didn't do too badly. I kind of kept up with it. It may have just been a an illusion that I wasn't getting keeping up with it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there we go. Back up to full. Okay, so that is for there. That's the... Ma no. Magician's Orb. Do I need to bind it to me first? There you go. And then put it in there. No. What the heh? Heh heh heh. They're ritual stones. Ritual stones. Oh, I'll put blood runes in there instead of ritual stones. Good job me. So ritual stones. That's the first thing then. Ritual stones are that. So I need to make another couple of those. So we get four ritual stones. And we put the four ritual stones. One in each of those. Like so. And the Magician's Orb. Then we get the Master Ritual Stone. Awesome. Okay. And then I'm going to keep that back. And then in this one, we're going to take the rest of these. I need to keep one back because I need to make another one of those. So that I've got 24 in total. Over this side, right, we've got this Ritual Diviner. Each of these are based... Oh, man, this is noisy. Hang on. Let me turn it off. All right. Now we're keeping it quiet. Just making some more of those reinforced slates. Uh, but doing this sacrificially. Doing it by hand this time. Because, wow, it's just so noisy. It's okay for the, the long term. I can just basically turn my sound off and get it done. But um, short term, when I'm uh, recording, I turn that off. Right, uh, so we were up to here. Yes. So there's another four, 24 ritual stones. And a master ritual stone. I need those in order to make the uh, awesome thing. Yes, the ritual that I need. So, <clears throat> one of the things that we've got going on here is this lava crystal, which is pretty cool actually. You put it into a furnace and it smelts stuff automatically like you've got lava in it. But it uses up LP from your network. And at the moment I've got 
I've got 1,800 LP in my network. If I use a weak blood orb, I take a little bit of damage, but then that puts 200 in the network. Take that off and look at the apprentice orb, and that gives me another 200. So each one of these orbs gives me a different place that I can store stuff. So at the magician's level, I think I can store a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. That That's the best you're going to get out of me. Because I can't remember the actual stats for it. But I put that lava crystal in there and make sure that's got enough blood in it as well. And then that should turn itself back into the next ritual crystal that I need. Um, how much does it actually take? It takes 10,000. So I've got to yeah, just make sure that the altar is full. That was me taking it out after a few minutes. I've just got to fill it back up again. And then after a little while, it should pop out as a weak activation sigil. Now, these weak activation sigils actually cost the full 10,000 that that can hold at the time. So, uh, we need to have all of these components made up. The Master Ritual Stone, the 24 stones, a diamond sword, and a weak activation crystal on it. But I've still got to paint this with a Ritual Diviner, or paint it with the inscription tools. I'm not going to paint the inscription tools on myself. What I'm going to use is the Ritual Diviner to do it for me. And in order to get those tools, these are the four different colours. Uh, I think that's air, fire, earth, and water. I think that's right. And air, earth, fire, and water. Yeah. To make a divination, Ritual Diviner. Now, I'm not really sure where I want to put this. I'm probably going to move it because it's fairly simple to move if I want to move it. So uh, let me just dig this down one block. That might work. And I might be able to figure this one out. Right. So shift right click in while it's in your hand. Changes to the ritual type that you want. So ritual of binding has just popped up. So now it's set to the ritual of binding. If I right click on it, it should start placing uh, maybe it needs to be that one block higher that it needed to be at then. Okay, so let's put it above ground. Maybe it needs a first one. Oh, yeah, there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. All right, so it's, uh, yeah, it was a lot faster than I remember. I remember having to do it singly, one, one punch at a time, but that's just done all of those from this one ritual diviner for me. All right, so I would have had to have placed these blocks individually to set it all up and then put those coloured inscribing tools on the right blocks to change their colour. But the Ritual Diviner is well worth it because it does it all for you. Now we've got this on the top and some rain coming down. I can do this ritual, but I think I probably need some LP in my network before I use the ritual. So I'm just going to give this a quick top up. Okay, that looks like it's working just about fine. Yeah, I've got 10,000 in the altar and 62,000 in me. Uh, in me, in my LP network. And the way you put that in is by putting one of these kind of orbs in and soaking it up. Or you can use one of the orbs and self-sacrifice in the same way, but it goes straight into your LP network. So if you see there, it's uh, not gone up at all okay it's not gone up at all through that one because that one's already got full so it's the magician's orb now that we're into that level of there we go so that has changed by uh 600 because i did three times which was 200 a time each time i used it on myself it did it so that's given me 62,774 lp in my network now this sword i think it takes about a thousand maybe 5,000 to activate and I think I just basically throw that down on there and then right click uh, you feel the pull but you are too weak to push any further what do it do it do it do it why 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 I got the magician's orb yet there you go have some more blood you are feel you feel a pull, but you are too weak to push any further. What? Alrighty. So my LP network is now over a hundred and nine thousand LP, and I believe it's like a ten thousand or something. It's a hundred thousand minimum or something like that. 
So we chuck that down there and then boom, no, please, please, please do it. Why, why won't you do this? Why won't you do it? Oh, man, I don't know what happened. I don't know why it did it elsewhere outside of the ritual, but it did. I don't know why. I brought it over here and it just worked first time of trying. Must be something to do with being in range or something of the uh, altar. How much blood have I got in here now? I've still got the same amount in there as I had before. I've still got pretty much the same in my essence as I had before. But now it's worked. Could I have been missing... Missing a piece of the ritual and moving it sorted the problem out? I don't know. But it fits just there anyway. So it's staying there for now. I can move it again later. And test that theory out when I bind something else. Because there are other bound tools that you can use. Uh, but all that just to get a bound sword, man. All that just to get a bound sword. And the bound sword looks a lot like the uh, sacrificial orb when it's in your hand. It doesn't really have a, a sword effect. Uh, but you do get to keep the ritual um, diviner. And you get to keep the activation crystal. So it's only really blocks that I need to make to make any more rituals work. And there is another ritual which we've been building up to. The Well of Suffering. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do that this episode. But I'm going to turn this back on now and hope, above hope, that I can get uh, some blood shards out of it. Because if I can't, then I'm struggling here. I'm struggling here, people, to try and complete this bit. I only wanted this one little section just to keep my LP network full at all times. And that might not even work. Let's throw that in there and soak up all the blood. Okay, so... I should be gaining blood. Yeah, there we go. I'm gaining blood all the time that those guys are in there. And I'm going to use my bound blade. I need to activate it first. There we go. Right, so you shift right click to activate it. And then I hit. I kill stuff. And that should give me some of these crystals. Some special crystals. Let's kill the first wave. Right, every time I swing the sword, I use LP out my LP network, as you can see. So we've used... Uh, just under a thousand LP just those few swings and I'm not even sure that I've picked up anything from it uh, yeah wrong flesh the usual gubbins nothing special it is a rare drop I guess so we shall see we shall see what I can get and then I can just sacrifice them to put them back in well put the blood back into the uh, orb and all that so that it costs me 50 a hit yes but I can do that and then maybe even oh there's one there there's one there there's one there can I get into it here did I get it mm, yes I did a weak blood shard awesome so it did work it did work first time it just didn't fall too far from the spawner itself this does quite a lot of damage to mobs I don't think it works the same as the sacrificial dagger I think it uh, only works in the same way if I do the same thing. Five? Oh, awesome. Awesome. I've got it all sorted. All right, let me turn this back off again now. I just want to... Actually, I'm just going to make sure that everything's full to the best of my ability. And then we will uh, turn it off and move on to the next stage. So now I've got my blood shards. There's a couple of things that I can do with them. The first being... I make these bloodstone bricks with weak blood shards and a stone with one weak blood shard and one stone I make a large bloodstone brick well 32 of them actually so I've used four of them to finish off the altar and that has now made it a tier 4 altar oh yes and now if I uh, if I take one of these shards I can put that one shard in in the altar and it will change it to the next level it will become the next level the next thing and this really does fill up fast now we're going really fast fill up so it should be done in no time whatsoever may not even need to fast forward this one no, it's still there okay may maybe i do have to fast forward it i don't know let's see how's it going it's still doing it okay we kill some more we kill some more we'll get some more bits and pieces we get some more junk more leveling up to be done Tons and tons of leveling up. Tons and tons of leveling up this episode. And are we there yet? Yeah, we're there now. Okay. And we get a master blood orb from that. 
So today I've managed to get through four levels, four tiers of blood magic. Pretty epic. And we are now on a level four altar. The only reason I wanted the level four altar though was to put, actually, there it is, block of coal. Put a block of coal in there and get the dusk rune or the dusk t inscription tool, should I say. Because without the dusk inscription tool, I can't make the next thing. The next thing being the the reason I was doing all this in the first place. There we go. We've now got that. Uh, elemental inscription tool dusk. Now, in order to make the Well of Suffering, I do the same thing as I did over here. In fact, I'm going to take all this back. But in order to do the Well of Suffering, I do the same thing again, but with 36 runes. And I need to also know where to put the Dusk runes. Uh, and the Tier 4 is the only way to get Dusk runes. So I go through all that just to get the Tier 4, to get the Dusk inscription tool, so I can make the Dusk runes for the Master Ritual of the Well of Suffering. And then I can do all this automatically. So I'm going to have to do another Dusk rune. And a little tiny crafting recipe with the divine, the ritual diviner that I've already got to turn it into the next level up. Uh, which requires demonic slates, which is tier 4 imbued slates, turn it to a demonic slate. Two of those and two of the dusk runes make us the ritual diviner that allows us to place dusk runes in our rituals. So I'm going to quickly get that done now. Okay, so with my new Ritual of the Diviner, I'm bringing it down here. And as far as I know, it comes up one block from here. Uh, it's, actually, ah, it's actually showing me where things are going to go. Aha, so it shows me where things are going to go. I, there's kind of a ghost block that happened there. Right, so we're going all of these blocks in order like this it will do all 36 i believe all 36 uh it needs to put one there thank you i think that's about right yeah that's about right so this is now an area that will um kill mobs it will kill mobs and send all the blood that it gets up into the altar up there so what i want to do with this is continue with the idea that i'm going to seal them all in so that they can't escape uh, but I do want to see them so I might try and do some more glass work around just so that we can see them over here and then put a layer of um, well actually I need to activate it first don't I let's activate it now or boom there we go this ritual is activated activate there we go ritual activated well done uh, yeah so now I want to put some uh, cursed earth as a layer on top of that and seal them in so they can't get out and then we should have that blood altar upstairs constantly being fed by nasty horrible mobs over here I may also take the location in the center for another book and have that so that I can spawn mobs in uh, as a an extra power base if I need to do some lots and lots of spawning then I can have the mobs spawning in there. But for right now, that is it for today's episode of A Druid's Tale. Thank you very, 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 very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. It's been a very blood magic-y based episode today. So if you saw that and skipped, you're not listening to this. If you stuck around, obviously you enjoyed it. And well, it is part of the story. It is now part of the story that Nemson the Druid becomes a master of blood magic and has this blood magic ritual altar underneath here where I will kill all the evil nasty hostile mobs that ever exist and turn them into blood to power other magics that I can then use to save the world. <laughs> now that's an evil app. <laughs> now that's not, that doesn't sound any better, does it? Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next episode. Uh, goodbye.